All right. So, so we saw this throughout. Uh, so, one of the useful skills you will need in probability theory is, uh, you know, s translating English into uh, you know language of events. Okay. So, we saw uh, soon enough. I mean, just now how uh, you know even but not a multiple of three got translated into events as you know a intersect b complement. Uh, here is another example. Okay. So, here is another example of how an experiment and event are described in English and then uh, one I am going to ask you or start uh, get you to think about how you would write complements and how things can uh, you know be written in terms of complements and what are the operations etc etc I mean it is it, it's, it's interesting I think ok. Uh, so, here is the example the here is the experiment what is the experiment uh, there are 5 persons who have identical hats ok and their hats get mixed up ok. So, this could be people in a you know cricket team or something like that they go away bus somewhere and they put their caps into some box and the caps get mixed up right. So, this can happen and then each person picks a cap at random a hat at random right. So, this is what they are doing. Uh, so, so that is that is the experiment ok and uh, now we are interested in events right. So, the outcome is what what is the outcome who got what hat right. So, that is the outcome uh, initially people come in with their own hats they put it into a box and then they pick up a hat at random what hat did each person get that is the outcome right. So, that is what that is the those are all the outcomes and then we will have interesting events uh, working uh, with these outcomes. So, notice we, we do not try to write the sample space here we do not try to define the outcome very precisely and come up with a representation for it and then write the sample space out in whole glory you could do that you could say you know h1 h2 h3 h4 h5 p1 p2 p3 p4 p5 who are these people h1 is the 5 hats p1 is what each person initially they come with p1 to h1 p2 to h2 etc and then what can happen p1 can get h3 p2 can get like you know any every possible rearrangement of 1 2 3 4 5 is what you are looking at as an outcome. So, you, you, have to, you have to you have to represent all that and think of all that you could do it uh, but you know maybe we should just try to do the problem you know without really going through all that trouble. So, that is also something that is interesting ok. Uh, here are events the first uh, event A is that uh, you know uh, no person gets their own hat right. So, this event has a name in uh, mathematics it is called a derangement ok. So, it got perfectly deranged in some sense right. So, every no one got their own hat no one was lucky right completely unlucky no person gets their own hat that is event A ok. Uh, look at event B, event B is a very uh, specific simple event it is every person gets their own hat ok. All of them got their own hat that is B. Uh, event C says at least one person does not get their own hat ok. So, hopefully that is clear to you at least one person ok not everybody got their own uh, own hat right that is the thing and then D is what at least one person gets their own hat ok. So, look at C and D C is at least one person does not get their own hat and D is at least one person gets their own hat ok. So, I, I want to ask first about complements what is A complement B complement. Now, in English uh, when, when you think of complement may, maybe you have a different way of thinking of complement, but uh, this is this is a more precise set theoretic sort of notion. So, you have to be very careful when you think of complement. So, what is A complement right no person gets their own hat. So, if you think of A complement it is uh, sometimes tempting to say that every person getting their own hat is the complement of this, but remember this is not an English language complement it is a very precise set theoretic definition ok. So, no person gets their own hat the complement if you think about it will end up being at least one person gets their own hat right. So, no person gets their own hat the complement of that the when will you say A did not occur ok. So, A occurs means no person got gets their own hat no, no person 1 is not wearing H1 is has got something else ok that is uh, event A event A occurring is that when will you say event A did not occur at least one person must have got their own hat right right. So, that is D. So, A complement ends up being D. So, similarly B complement will end up being C ok. So, think about it every person gets their own hat is B ok 
and see is at least one person does not get their own hat. Okay, so that will end up occurring when B did not occur. Okay, when when you have uh, B occurring, every person gets their own hat. When you say B does not occur, then there must be at least one person who did not get their own hat. Okay, so you see B complement is equal to C and A complement is equal to D. Okay. Uh, if you if you actually take the trouble of writing down the sample space for this, then you'll understand maybe a bit more clearly how this works out. But you can also see, think about it, and argue it out. Okay. Uh, the next question is: Are A and B disjoint? Okay. Think about this question a little bit. Okay. The question. The look at the two even. No person gets their own hat. Every person gets their own hat. A and B are they disjoint? Yes, isn't it? So A and B are uh, disjoint. You cannot have, uh, you know, so if, if A occurred, no person should be getting their own hat and you definitely uh, B did not occur, right? So B should be uh, disjoint from A, okay? So there's no case of A, uh, you know, one outcome which would have both A and B occur at the same time. So A intersect B is a null set, right? So there's nothing in the intersection of A and B. So if A occurred, B did not occur. B occurred, A did not occur. Okay, we know that for sure. Okay, so A and B are disjoint indeed, yes. Uh, what is A intersect B complement? Okay, so when I say what is, I mean what is it in English, right? So you can, you can of course say A intersect B complement is A intersect B complement. There's nothing more to say in it, but we're talking about uh, what it means. Okay, so B complement is uh, what? It's, it's going to be C. At least one person does not get their own hat. Okay, and A is what? no person gets their own hat. Now B is disjoint from A, so if you look at B complement and you intersect it with A, think of the Venn diagram, right? A and B are disjoint. You look at B complement and intersect with A, what will you get? You will get A itself, isn't it? So A itself is the answer. So A intersect B complement is nothing but no person gets their own hat, okay? So think about that, think about these kind of things a little bit and uh, you'll, you'll, get, uh, you'll get a better sense of how you know, uh, this, this notion of events and uh, the English uh, interpretation of what happens in the experiment or the physical interpretation of what happens in the experiment, how they are tied together and how when you complement something happens, when you, you know, when you take intersection, something else happens and all these things are very important. So this kind of skill is very important. Every problem you look at in probability theory, at least the toy problems we look at or even the real problems we look at will have something like this. Take a look at this one, for instance. Here's an IPL example. Just for uh, fun, I came up with one simple IPL example, maybe. Okay, so here again, you'll see how all these unions and intersections uh, will start, uh, you know, sounding something something like, you know, how do you translate that into what is actually happening in the experiment, okay? So here's the example, uh, here's the experiment, okay? There is one over, maybe in an IPL match, it has six deliveries. Uh, in each delivery, let's say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 6 runs may be scored. We don't allow other possibilities. Of course, that's not the only thing that can happen. Uh, you can get 5 runs or uh, even 7 runs. If you allow for extras, if you allow for overthrows and things like that, all that can happen. We don't allow for all that. We just say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 6 runs may be scored. Okay. Uh, here are the events I'm interested in. Event A is no force. Okay. Event B is no sixes. And event C is exactly 20 runs are scored in this over. Okay, so that's uh, event A, B, and C. And one may ask a question, what is A union B? A union B is over had no force or over had no sixes. Okay, so that's uh, something interesting. Think about what that means. So supposing in an over, a boundary was scored, okay, and no sixes were scored, okay. A union B would have still occurred, okay. If a boundary is scored, A did not occur, but no sixes were there, only boundaries were there, all six were boundaries, let's say. No, I mean, let's say. Then in that case, A did not occur, but B occurred. But because B occurred, A union B is A or B, we can say A union, A union B still occurred. Okay? What about intersection? No force, no sixes, right? So you cannot have, the over should not have any you know, uh, hit that went across the rope. Okay? That's one thing. Can you have A intersect, B intersect, C? if you are allowed to score only 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 or 6 runs and what is A intersect B intersect C? There should be no force, there should be no sixes but you should score 20 runs from 6 deliveries 
and you know in this situation it's not possible right you cannot you can have maximum of 18 runs in this situation so 20 runs is not possible so a intersect b intersect c is in fact the null set okay so this there's no outcome in that uh, situation that can satisfy uh, where, where we can say a intersect b intersect c has occurred okay so hopefully this gives you a feel for how you know uh, the interpretation for uh, an event or an occurrence in the experiment relates to the the way in which we think of them as subsets and unions and intersections and all that okay uh, so I have, I have put down here just one more result which might be useful for you uh, this is called de morgan's law uh, we, we say a, a union b and what about a union b complement okay so if, if you were to do a union b complement or a intersect b complement in set theory there is this de morgan's law this this laws are very very useful uh, quite often uh, they, they will come to your rescue when you want to interpret an event given uh, in English, uh, A union B whole complement is A complement intersect B complement and A intersect B whole complement is A complement union B complement. Uh, there are proofs for this result. I'm, I'm not going to go into details there, but this is quite useful. So for instance, uh, if you say no force and no sixes in the over A intersect B, if you want to take complement of that, what should have happened? You know, no force and no sixes, even one boundary is scored. A, you will be in A intersect B complement, right? So there should be either 1, 4 or 1, 6. So at least 1, 4 or at least 1, 6 must be there. At least one hit outside of the boundary ropes must be there for A intersect B complement. Look at A complement, union B complement. A complement is what? At least there was 1, 4. B complement is what? At least there was 1, 6. So A complement or B complement is the same as A intersect B whole complement. Okay, so I gave you a proof by illustration. Okay, I just gave you an example of how that works it's possible to prove this properly if you're interested also okay so so once again let's uh, quickly summarize what we did in the last two slides uh, we took an experiment which had a very realistic uh, physical meaning okay the outcomes have something physical you can relate to and then we started defining events as sets and uh, and then started relating combining these events in interesting ways and asked the question what does it mean in the physical reality of the experiment when you do these combinations okay and we got this translation between english and events english and events and uh, for you to be able to solve problems successfully in this class you have to be comfortable in doing this translation between events and english okay so in fact one can say a lot of statistics is done that way okay so that's the that's that sort of concludes what we looked at uh, as far as events are concerned uh, that's the end of this uh, this this part of the course and the next part comes uh, is very important we're we going to move towards probability now so far we have not really used that word probability okay we are, we are talking about probability theory but we haven't really used the word probability yet uh, we've been only talking about experiment outcome sample space and events uh, the next lecture will be about probability okay so let's see you there